Hey guys, how's it going? Daniel here. Today we're taking a look at the new Amazon Fire tablet. Now I'm actually really excited for this thing because when it was announced, I was thinking back to the old days when I used to buy really cheap electronics that would kind of mimic the same thing that the more expensive electronics would do. So I wanted to see if this tablet is able to do what the more expensive tablets do and see if it doesn't sacrifice too many features and that it's worth the money. Now this tablet retails for $50 and as far as specs go, this has a 1024 by 600 resolution, which is gonna give you a 171 PPI which is gonna be good enough, especially if you haven't been exposed to very high density displays, then it's gonna look really good. On the other hand, if you have seen a lot of retina displays and ultra HD displays, then this is gonna look very pixely and you're gonna see a lot of the pixels in the text and in the app icons and in a lot of parts of the tablet. Now this does have a quad core 1.3 gigahertz processor and it also has eight gigabytes of internal memory that you can expand up to 128 gigabytes, which is great if you wanna load a bunch of movies up onto this before a road trip or anything like that. Now this guy also has two cameras. We have a VGA front facing camera and then a two megapixel rear facing camera, which is capable of recording 720p HD video. Now all that aside, let's talk hardware. Of course, for $50, you can't really expect much, but since it does have a matte black back made of plastic, it does make it look a little bit more expensive than what it actually is. It also has a nice heft to it, which doesn't make it feel too cheap. Now the plastic on the back does get dirty quite easily, and so does the front display. You'll get a ton of smudges on this device, especially if you get annoyed by those, then this isn't gonna be good for you. And I found myself cleaning this every time I finished using the tablet. Now, oddly enough, this tablet has every single thing on the top of the tablet. So we have the lock button, we have the micro USB, we have the mic, we have the volume jack, and then we have the volume rocker. So you got all those functions up there. And then on the right hand side of the tablet, we do have a little slit so that we can put in the micro SD card. More importantly than all that is of course the software. And this does come with Fire OS 5, which is Amazon's latest Fire OS software. Now, a good thing about that is that Amazon has definitely improved the software. It's definitely less sluggish and a lot more quick and responsive. And it's also a lot more easy and simple to use. So anyone can pick this up and know how to use it immediately. The first thing that you're greeted with is home where you have all your apps and everything that you use. To the left side is the recent, which is all your recently opened items. And then we got books, video, games, shop, apps, music, audiobook, and newsstand. And within all those, you can of course search for new stuff that you're looking for and easily play that or open that directly from there. Now we of course got the Amazon App Store, which has a lot of apps now. You can download things like Netflix, Hulu, HBO, TED, and a ton of new games that are coming out for Android are coming out for Fire OS as well, which is really good. So we do get Goat Simulator, Crossy Road, Hearthstone, and those are all like really big games right now. Now this does come pre-installed with a ton of apps. We got Amazon Video, of course, Amazon Music, Kindle Books, Amazon Photos, and a bunch of other apps. We of course do have the camera app, so you can actually use this to take pictures. And I think the only reason they included the pictures is for that kind of gimmicky thing. I remember owning a DS as a kid and having that camera on there and it was a really bad camera but I always use it to take pictures of things and add doodles to it and they actually included that functionality in this so you can add like little stickers to pictures and things and I think that some people will find that kind of amusing from time to time especially kids now the thing that I didn't think this was gonna run was games especially heavy games like Goat Simulator and Hearthstone and I downloaded also Crossy Road as I mentioned I tried that one out first and that one worked perfectly just as you'd expect the only somewhat of a lag that I experienced was right at the beginning when you open the game when it's loading all the files up it does lag a little bit but after that it's all flawless. As far as Goat Simulator goes, it also worked perfectly and I actually never really experienced any lag with that game, which was really nice to see. Lastly, I played Hearthstone for about an hour in one session and that did actually heat up the tablet, the top of the tablet. And I just wanted to mention that even though it does happen to most tablets and smartphones nowadays, it doesn't get to the point where it's not bearable, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Now, the great thing about this tablet is that anything you open up, it opens up as it should. And at no point are you reminded that you only paid $50 for this tablet. And I think that's very important. I think when you pay for something that's $50 and cheaper than other things, you don't wanna feel like you got a somewhat inferior product to the rest. You wanna feel like you still got $50 worth of money and this is it. This actually manages to make those $50 worth it. Now, as far as battery life goes, it actually takes quite a bit of time to charge. It takes nearly four hours to charge, but the battery itself is actually quite good. It'll pretty much last you a full day of mixed use. So if you read a book, then watch a TV show, and then maybe play like Tetris or something like that, then you're gonna get it to last a whole day. 
But then if you're gonna play some Hearthstone for extended periods of times or anything like that, then you're only gonna get it to last three or four hours. Now the other thing is that if you're using this for nothing graphic intensive, so if you're just like reading books and browsing the web, then you're not gonna have any issues with getting that battery to last a couple days because the standby time on this is actually really good. I left this on my desk a whole 24 hours and it only lost close to 10%, which is really good. Now, if you're not in the market for a $50 tablet, you might be wondering, well, who exactly is a $50 tablet for? And actually, this has a lot of people that can benefit from this tablet or, you know, actually want to use this tablet. So first off, we got the elderly, which usually don't really go for any tablets. And if you're going to get them a tablet or, you know, as a gift, this might be a good tablet to start off since it doesn't really matter if they drop it. This is a really good starter tablet just in case you want to later move them onto an iPad or a Nexus 9 or a larger or more expensive Kindle Fire. With that said, this is also great for kids. So if you're a parent and you don't want your kids to use the iPad that you have or the Nexus that you have and don't want them to potentially break that, then this is a great tablet. This has a ton of things and you also get Kindle free time, which is something that most other tablets don't offer. And you can limit the use and select what apps you want your kids to use. And that's actually really great. Now, lastly is students. And this is actually quite good because usually students are on a budget and $50 isn't too much that's gonna break the bank. Now, of course, you can load textbooks onto this, PDFs and all that good stuff so that you can get all your class things. You can actually, if you wanted to, create some documents on here and write up some papers. It won't be very efficient or quick or easy to do, but it's definitely doable. So in the end, this tablet actually does a lot more than you would expect it to. And the only problems that I actually found with this is that whenever you're loading things, you just gotta let them load for a few seconds before you start scrolling or anything. You can't just immediately scroll the New York Times as soon as you load it. So you just have to wait a few seconds for all the pictures and everything to load up, and then you're gonna be fine and you can multi-touch and zoom in and everything without having any problems. The one other complaint that I have is that, you know, the plastic isn't the best, but of course this is again $50. And then the front display is quite glary. So if you're in a room with a lot of light or sunlight, then your content isn't gonna be very easy to see. So you do have to make sure you're in the right lighting conditions to enjoy your content in the best possible way. One thing that I did wanna note is that this does come with special offers, which are little ads every time that you open the Kindle. And that's not big of an issue for me. I kinda of like having a different wallpaper there every time that I open the Kindle. But if you do have a problem, then you would have to pay another $15 for the tablet to get it without those offers. But I kinda of highly recommend the offers. They kinda of look cool from time to time. You'll get some cool book covers there. And uh, sometimes you'll get some good deals for some prime products and stuff like that. So with that said, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. It was just kind of to show you what a $50 tablet now looks like. And it's kind of impressive. And hopefully this kind of paves way to other cheap tablets and more affordable ones that don't cost $500, $600, or $1,000. So aside from that, thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.